I want to do a flip with you. Uh, I want to hit this XPU GPU thing. I mean, look, it was like Broadcom's going to do chips for open AI. And then NVIDIA comes in with 100 billion. And now people are like, well, maybe they won't do the chips. I mean, can they with that much investment from NVIDIA? I mean, technically, yeah, no, maybe. Uh, and now M MTIA and they're buying companies to advance, but they're also working more with CoreWeave. And of course, they want to get faster capacity. So should these hyperscalers just wave the white flag and go all in on merchant infrastructure? Let's go to the flip. Pat, you are the go. So the question here is, I mean, is it time to wave the I think you're saying yes, wave the white flag and just go all in on merchant, go all in NVIDIA, all in AMD, scrap your Broadcom projects, scrap your custom Marvell. It's NVIDIA time, baby. Yes. So for this simulated uh, debate here, uh, they should go all in on merchant because it's all about time to market. Okay. It's not about cost savings. It's about time to market right now. And I think uh, Jensen put, uh, some good Jensen math out there that talked about, uh, and I think this can apply to AMD when they get their uh, rack scale rack scale solution out there uh, as well. Um, you're actually better off um, going with uh, a merchant GPU than even getting an ASIC for free. So uh, the amount of tokens per dollar and the time it's going to take to to get that out and ensure you know gpus will consume uh, more power in aggregate but it gets back to how many tokens per how much revenue can you derive um, from that the other thing is that you know look at the um i'll say you know put cuda and rockham uh, out there uh, the amount of developers who are developing for those compared to the interfaces that that go into all of the XPUs, uh, it, it dwarfs uh, any any single company's uh, software bench. So the developer friction is real, and every one of those alpha site interviews, that's a hundred percent what they uh, what they're saying. The other thing is the hit or miss view of it. I, mean, I would say that you know even even for one of the the uh, the best. XPUs out there probably has a 50% hit rate on whether it's uh, hitting it hitting or not. And a lot of that has to do with this, you know, vicious cycle of, of, of AI and the models and, oh my gosh, okay, LLMs, we're there. And then we get into multi-turn reasoning and then we get into pre-training and, and the things that um, uh, DeepSeek uh, brought to the uh, table. So, Literally every ASIC dollar could fund more capacity with GPUs, better networks, or or even um, you know um, yeah new data centers out there because each one of these XPU designs is between three hundred and five hundred million dollars uh, out there and you know let's just say you buy into my fifty percent uh, hit rate um, you know there might be a time in the future. When you know the model vacillation and the curve dies down, kind of like uh, ASICs were, ASICs XPUs were really good at you know machine doing object recognition, doing one thing. Uh, there might be a time, but uh, you know the time is not now. My final comment is that um, you, I could see a situation where Intel could continue their Gaudi three as a merchant. XPU that you could develop on. Signal 65 has done a lot of good testing uh, on that, that that shows uh, how much more efficient uh, an XPU is that, than even a GPU. So let's say you've got AMD, you've got Intel, maybe you've got Grok as, as, as an option. Maybe you have Cerebrus. Maybe you have uh, Gaudi 4 that Intel could create. So yeah, it's time to stop with the custom stuff here, folks. All right, that's the that's the jam, Pat. But I disagree. I think it's a terrible idea to discontinue it. You know, we have a five hundred eighty-three billion dollar TAM by the end of twenty twenty-nine. That's still going to be about sixty to seventy percent GPU and uh, merchant off the shelf. But that other thirty percent or so, hundred plus billion dollars, is going to be the largest hyperscalers deciding to control their own fate and wanting to make sure that they optimize their supply chains 
They never have capacity issues related to being able to get something from merchant. And of course, being able to harden a, a piece of silicon to be used for the very specific needs that they have to optimize within their infrastructure. So look, if you don't want to make as much money and you don't want to be as profitable and you don't want to guarantee your future, then sure, go all in on merchant. But if you actually want to say, hey, we still want to be worth a few trillion dollars down the line. And yes, it's great that NVIDIA is going to be worth five trillion very soon, but we want to control our fate. We've got businesses to run. We've got customers to serve and we've got profits to make in order to return value to our shareholders. You're probably going to go down the XBU route. And look, everything is as bad as it'll ever be today. All these things are going to get better. AI is actually going to make chip making better. It's going to optimize these designs. It's going to shorten cycles. You've got these companies that are actually helping to do this, to make this happen faster. The Broadcom, the ARMS, the Synopsis. These companies are helping build and visualize and design and optimize silicon so that they can be taped out faster and brought to market more quickly with better results. The software work has to be done, but hey, everybody thinks Huawei can do it. So you don't think Microsoft can do it. You don't think that, uh, you know, Meta can do it. Of course they can. It's just a matter of time. The ASICs we have today are the worst they will ever be. They will continue to get better with every generation. The Google TPU has absolutely proven that you can make a hardened piece of silicon that can be pretty darn flexible and can do pretty amazing things. Why I'm so bullish on Google is they got that done first. They've done it the best. Amazon is following. This is my biggest complaint about Microsoft. It's got to get this done sooner than later. And by the way, NVIDIA is going to get more than their fair share with close to $400 billion of AI infrastructure revenue by the end of the decade. So I think we can have our cake and eat it too. But these hyperscalers need to control their own fate. And don't, don't, don't cry in your, in your, in your, in your, in your suit bowls, uh, NVIDIA bowls, because you guys are going to be just as, just fine as well. So onward. Build your custom chips. Give Pat and I something to talk about for the long haul. I think you and I both agree it's a mix. Yes, in the end. Yeah, yeah. And when the sine wave slows down, um, it's going to make it a lot easier because you're not going to have to crank out a new XPU every year, right? Um, and you know the design tools are getting better, but but one of the biggest expenses is trying to get a mass set inside of uh, TSMC uh, bleeding edge. Uh, bleeding edge here and the industry is is investing a ton to to disconnect themselves uh or decrease the blast radius of uh of cuda so. look it's uh it's it's a it's a win with but they all want to have some margin optimization in the future